let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Our Archbishop Isaiah, the other Presbyterian, the Diaconate and Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. For the servants of God, Benjamin and Domina, who are now being withdrawn for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. That they may descend upon them perfect and peaceful love, and the help of God, let us pray to the Lord. That they may preserve them blessed and from concord and sound faith, let us pray to the Lord. That they be kept with blameless life and conduct. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord our God will grant them an honorable marriage and a marital bed undefiled. Let us pray to the Lord.
Αμέν. Εις το όνομα του Πατρός και του Υιού και του Άιου Πνεύματος. Αμήν. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The servant of God, Benjamin, is betrothed to the handmaiden of God, Domina. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The servant of God, Benjamin, is betrothed to the handmaiden of God, Domina. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The servant of God, Benjamin, is betrothed to the handmaiden of God, Dominum, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The handmaiden of God, Dominum, is betrothed to the servant of God, Benjamin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The handmaiden of God, Dominum, is betrothed to the servant of God, Benjamin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The handmaiden of God, Dominum, is betrothed to the servant of God, Benjamin, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Give me your right hand right there. There you go. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our God, when the servant of the patriarch Abraham was sent into Mesopotamia to seek a wife for his master Isaac, you walked with him and through the meeting of the well you revealed to him that he should engage Rebekah. Will you now, Lord, bless the betrothal of these your servants Benjamin and Domina, and confirm the word that they have given? Establish them in that sacred oneness that rests in you. For in the beginning you made them man and woman, and it is by you that the woman is joined to man to support one another and to perpetuate humankind. As you send forth your truth to your inheritance, making your covenant with your servants, our fathers, your chosen ones in every generation, look upon these, your servants, Benjamin and Domina, and ground their betrothal firmly in faith and oneness of mind, in truth and in love. For you, Lord, have made your will clear, that a pledge shall be given and confirmed by every means. By a ring authority was given to Joseph in Egypt, Daniel was honored with a ring in the land of Babylon. By a ring, the brightness of Thamar was manifested. With a ring, our Heavenly Father displayed mercy for the prodigal son, for he said, put a ring on his hand and bring the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and make merry. Your own right hand, Lord, armed Moses in the Red Sea, and by the word of your truth were the heavens established and the foundations of the earth made firm. And the right hands of your servants shall likewise be blessed by your mighty word and your upraised arm. Now then, Lord, bless the giving of rings with a heavenly blessing, and may the angel of the Lord lead them all the days of their life. For it is you who bless and sanctify all things, and to we offer the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages.
both now and ever, and unto the ages
grant everything that they ask that leads to salvation. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you sanctify pure and mystical marriage, but also ordain the marriage of mortal men, preserving our immortality, but providing for the needs of this life as well. In the beginning you formed man and set him as sovereign over your creation, but then said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make a helper that is fit for him, and taking one of his ribs you made woman. Seeing her, Adam said, This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and leaves to his own wife, and they become one flesh. And what God has joined together let not man put asunder. You also now, Lord, grant and send down upon these your servants Benjamin and Domina, your handmaiden, deferring to her husband and by acting as the wife's protector that they may live according to your will. Bless them, O Lord, our God, as you blessed Abraham and Sarah. Bless them, Lord, our God, as you blessed Isaac and Rebekah. Bless them, Lord God, as you blessed Jacob and all the patriarchs. Bless them, Lord God, as you blessed Joseph and Asenah. Bless them, Lord God, as you blessed Moses and Zipporah. Bless them, Lord God, as you blessed Joachim and Anna. Bless them, Lord God, as you blessed Zacharias and Elizabeth. Protect them, O Lord our God, as you did Noah in the ark. Protect them as you did Jonah in the belly of the whale. Protect them as you did the three holy youths from the fire, sinking down upon them dew from heaven. May there come upon them the joy of the blessed Helen as she found her precious cross. Be mindful then, Lord our God, as you were mindful of Enoch, Shem, and Elijah. Be mindful of them, Lord, as you were of the holy forty martyrs, conferring upon them the crowns from heaven. Be mindful, Lord, of the parents who nurture them, for the prayers of the parents make firm the foundations of homes. Be mindful, Lord, of your servants and all the attendants in their bridal party who have come to share in this joy. Lastly, Lord, be mindful of this your servant Benjamin and this your handmaiden Domina. Bless them with a fruitful union fair children, and harmony of soul and body. Exalt them like the cedars of Lebanon, like a luxuriant vine, and let their goods so increase that having everything in abundance, they may abound in every good work that is pleasing to you. Let them see their children's children, like so many olive saplings sitting around their table, <coughs> and finding favor in your sight, may they be as radiant as the stars of heaven in you, our Lord, to whom all glory, dominion, honor, and worship are due. Holy God, you form man out of earth and fashion woman out of his flesh and join her to him as a helpmeet, for it seemed good to your majesty that man should not be alone on the earth. Now too, Master, reach out your hand from your holy dwelling place and conjoin these your servants Benjamin and Domina, for by you is this woman married to the man. Unite them in one mind, wed them into one body, grant them the delight of fair children. For yours is the dominion, and yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. You can put your hands down comfortably. Okay. Sleep right there. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The servant of God, the servant of God, Benjamin, is crowned in marriage to the handmaiden of God, Domina. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. The servant of God, Benjamin, is crowned in marriage to the handmaiden of God, Domina. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The servant of God, Benjamin, is crowned in marriage to the handmaiden of God, Dominum, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The handmaiden of God, Dominum, is crowned in marriage to the servant of God, Benjamin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The handmaiden of God, Dominum, is crowned in marriage to the servant of God, Benjamin, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The handmaiden of God, Dominum, is crowned in marriage to the servant of God, Benjamin, 
in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. O Lord our God, crown them with glory and honor. Yet each one of you individually must love his wife as he is very self. And the wife must see to it that she treat her husband with respect. And so they took it, and with the steward of the feast, tasted the water. 
called out to come wine and did not know where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the law to him, the steward of the feast called the bridegroom and said to him, Every man serves the good wine first, and when men have drunk free, then the poor wine. But you have kept the good wine until now. This is the first of his signs. Jesus did it in God.
Lord, it's signal honor to man, the crown of all you create. Confer a spiritual blessing upon this common cup, which you offer to those who are united in the community of marriage. For your name is blessed, and your kingdom is glorified. Of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. And to the ages of ages. Okay, three times. Okay. I will drink of Be blessed as was Isaac and increase as did Jacob, walking in peace and keeping God's commandments in righteousness. And you, O bride, be exalted like Sarah and rejoice as did Rebecca. Be fruitful as was Rachel and delight in your husband while observing all that the law requires, for this is what is pleasing to God. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our God, who came to Cana in Galilee and there blessed the wedding feast, bless also these your servants who through your good providence have now been united in marriage. Bless their comings and their goings and fill their life with all that is good. And O oh Lord, receive their crowns into your kingdom, preserving them spotless, beyond reproach and blameless, now and ever into ages of ages. the one Godhead and sovereignty bless you and vouchsafe to you a long life and fair children prospering you in life and in faith and may you know in abundance all the good things upon the earth and be found worthy to enjoy the promised blessings as well through the prayers of the Theotokos and of all the saints Thank you. 
maintain and proclaim marriage to be an honorable estate in Christ our true God through the prayers of his own holy mother of the holy glorious and praise of the apostles of saints Constantine and Helen crowned by God and declared equal of the apostles of the great part of Procopius and of all the saints have mercy on us and save us for he is a good God who loves mankind through the prayers of holy fathers Lord Jesus Christ our God have mercy upon us and save us May the most holy Trinity bless, protect, and keep you always. Amen. You may be seated. Well, Ben and Dobbin, it's wonderful that we're all here in town at the same time so that we could celebrate this beautiful marriage, one that we've been looking forward to for a long time and preparing for, and we've had many, many people, as you know, on the ground here in Salt Lake City, uh, most notably your parents, getting everything ready for you on this beautiful day. And it's wonderful that it's happened. We've had this beautiful and amazing event here in the life of the church, most specifically, not only in the life of the church, but as we read in the prayers today, the entire narrative through the Old Testament and New Testament scriptures, every couple, nearly the Bible, lives up as examples of true and complete and precious love culminating with you on this day. You complete the life of the church, and there isn't anything that is less than that significance of what you've done on this beautiful day. You heard in the context of the service today, the account of St. Helen finding the precious cross. And that's kind of an obscure kind of story one might think to slip into the wedding service because we don't know much about St. Helen in terms of her life in the church with a husband or her marriage or her relationship in terms of anything of sanctity. It's the relationship that we know of her son, the Emperor Constantine, that is paired together with her. Yet I want you to always have as an image that one brief sentence in this service of the joy that St. Helen felt when she found the precious cross. Because that's going to mirror the joy that Ben felt when he found his precious domino. And what does that mean? That means that from the moment that you saw this woman standing next to you, now your wife, everything has changed. Every thought, every purpose, every responsibility, everything has changed once you found that joy. A joy that I don't even believe that we realize we're looking for. Even if we think we're ready to get married, even if we think we're ready to quote unquote grow up and take responsibility in life and move on to that next step. We don't know what happens until that person is placed in front of us. And just as Helen looked upon the cross as a source of joy, it's also a source of life-altering joy. Because once you retrieve the most holy relic, that physical presence of Christ's sacrifice and love for us on the cross, and presented it back to the world as a relic to be venerated in the most precious and whole way, that is how you are able to look to each other. Because in finding each other, whether we realize it or not, we find God. And when we find God, we no longer act as we did or we might without Him. Because you have each other in your lives. You have your family to look upon and remind you each and every day that you are gifts to each other. And that having been transformed by finding each other as she did that cross, you look at life through an entirely different prism, an entirely different spectrum. It's sacrificial. It is of complete love. It's of setting down the needs of the self and looking to the other in every way. This is
is the love that St. Helen felt when she found that cross. Because she knew what it also meant, and that is what I'd like to end with you on this day in terms of your marriage. She knew that she found salvation on that day. And what you find as you come together before the altar of our Lord, <clears throat> professing your love not only for each other, not only celebrating the love that all of the family and attendants, the many attendants that have gathered on this day, <laughs> to celebrate you, to celebrate the sanctity of marriage, not only having your siblings with you and everyone that is gathered, this is all a process that leads unto salvation, everlasting life, permanence, something that never goes away. That is what you've entered into on this day. That is what you will do hand in hand as you are at this time. So on behalf of myself and Deacon Anatoly, the beautiful choir that presented the hymn so beautifully today, and all who come together to keep you mindfully in prayer and your love for each other. May God continue to bless and sanctify and love you all the days of your lives. Congratulations. You are so welcome. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks. Congratulations. Please stand. You may now respectfully kiss your bride. <laughs>
Fisher and Mrs. Ben Satterfield. your bride and groom, everybody, Domina and Ben. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who are now and ever to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father and the Son. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Father, give the blessing. Christ our God, as we come together to celebrate the union of your servant Benjamin, your handmaiden Domina, we ask that you guide, protect, inspire, and lead them all the days of their lives and bless and sanctify this food and drink that has been prepared to their honor and to your glory for your holy now and ever and into ages of ages. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you, Father. Well, good evening and welcome. Uh, bear with me this evening. I don't get often opportunity to speak very often. I, I live in a, with a Greek wife and two daughters, and so I don't get to speak very often. Uh, Usually it's only to say, yes, dear, or go ask your mother. So anyway, uh, we're so happy that you've all come to celebrate this special occasion with uh, Ben and Domina. If you don't already know, I'm Rob Hobeck, as I was just announced here. And this is my beautiful wife, Tanya. And we're, of course, the proud parents of this bride. Um, we'd like to thank some special guests tonight. Uh, first, we'd like to thank Father Anthony and his... his <laughs> His lovely wife, Presbytera Andrea, for joining us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The marriage ceremony you provided early and celebrated with the community here tonight was absolutely incredible. So, thank you. Um, our family is uh, so very grateful, of course, to you. We'd like to also thank uh, uh, Deacon uh, Anatola. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, say, I don't speak too often, so... Uh, Deacon and his lovely wife, uh, Margaret, for joining this evening as well. So thank you, Deacon Anatoly. And by the way, Margaret, the flowers are absolutely beautiful. So thanks, Margaret. <clears throat> um, at this time, I would like to recognize uh, uh, Ben's father. Uh, he calls, goes by Big Ben. Big 
band. Woo! And Tina Satter. Tina! As the parents of the groom, uh, they came a long way to be uh, at this uh, wedding today. They've traveled all the way from Ohio. And of course, we have many guests here this evening that travel from far and wide. I guess we've from Amsterdam to Hawaii to almost every state in between, I guess. So a lot of folks here tonight. Thank you so very much for uh, coming out this evening. So thank you. Um, we met uh, uh, Tina before in California at Ben and Domino's home and, uh, and Ben's father for the first time this week. They're the nicest people and we're so happy that our families will, will be joined together. I know how proud they must be of their son. Can you hear me? Okay. I know how, how, how proud they must be of their son, of course, and so are we. In fact, if I had to prepare a list of all the attributes of a perfect son-in-law, I would have to give, give him 100%. But then, but then, but then, I got thinking, maybe it should be closer to 99%, since after all, you are an Ohio State Buckeye fan. <laughs> If you don't already know, um, Ben is an avid football fan, and I'm sure this wedding was planned for the, fir for the off season of football. Amen. Ben, welcome to our family. Um, we did discover this week that the Holbecks are apparently no match for the Satterfields when it comes to the game of cornhole. You would think that having myself grown up on a farm in the middle of the Corn Belt, I would have been a little better at that game, but unfortunately that wasn't true. Ben, I want to give you some fatherly advice. You are already outnumbered two to one with Domina and now a daughter. Be prepared for some drama. In fact, if I really Curly recall correct, I think Greeks invented drama. <laughs> and certainly I can attest to that. So. so just be prepared. And whenever you have a disagreement with Domina, you should always get in the last two words. And that should be, yes dear, as I already mentioned earlier. <laughs> yes dear. I know my kids growing up were a with especially my daughters, I should say, were oftentimes a little embarrassed of their father. Um, I, think it, I think it happened only rarely, of course, that I would ever embarrass you, you know, but yeah, you know, once in a while it did happen, of course, but, but Domina, you used to always go to your mother and tell her that dad doesn't know any better. He was raised in a barn. <laughs> I wonder where he got, she got that phrase. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, Domina, you're so beautiful. Your mom and I are so proud of you. I can still remember the day your mom gave birth to you. It seemed like only yesterday. And I had to walk you from the delivery room to the nursery. I tell you, that was the longest walk of my life. <laughs> I thought I was going to drop you. And today, of course, I walked you down the aisle. But I didn't drop you, but I surely didn't want to give you away. It's um, much easier knowing that the two of you will be happy together. And thank you, Ben. It, was ma it made it a lot easier. Um, you and Ben are already given us probably the most precious gift, our first grandchild, Evania Catherine. And we couldn't be happier. Uh, as Papu and Yaya, we wish you lived a little closer. Maybe like, like next door would be really nice. But thank goodness for FaceTime. Thank goodness. Ben and Domino, you both have grandmothers who, due to the age, cannot be here today. 
Uh, ben has a grandmother who's 94, and my mother is 93. But I know they're thinking of you today, both of you, and I'm sure they're wishing you the very best. I know there are family members that aren't here today that have passed away, but I know they are here today in spirit. Domina, your Yaya, God rest her soul, was watching down today as you got ready. You see in the bride room, there's lots of pictures located downstairs here in this church. And your Yaya was in a lot of those pictures. So, so I know she was here today in spirit. I love you guys. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Presbyterra. Thank you all so much, and Deacon and Margaret. As my firstborn child, the oldest of four, God sent me an angel, everything I wanted and more. Your cute little spirit just melted my heart, and I knew as time went by, I never wanted to part. Then the teen years soon came, and an active girl you were. You cheered, you danced, and young love you did endure. We were always so close, as every mo mother and daughter should be, as you got home from your first date, she came screaming to the bottom of the stairs, Mom, he tried to kiss me. <laughs> I have loved watching you grow and learning and living. You have always been such a wonderful daughter, so loving and giving. The first time she met Ben, her mouth moved so fast, she never seemed to like anyone, so I knew it wouldn't last. Weeks turned to months, and that is all that she spoke of. I thought, uh-oh, this isn't like her. Do you suppose it is love? She said, Ben and Dad, they have so much in common, they do. They are both not from the city. They are both from Timbuktu. <laughs> you know, Domina, she lives in L.A., so when her and Ben finally came a-calling, I knew this was the real deal, as his looks were so enthralling. <laughs> I am so lucky you found such an everlasting love. I am so grateful for our blessings and our dear Lord above. Just remember, you are still my little girl, my angel, my pride, even though you have met sweet Ben, who now calls you his new bride. Thank you. One more. So, in Greek tradition, uh, they usually use the word yasu uh, when, when giving a toast. So, please raise your glasses as we toast Ben and Domina. Marriage is like a golden ring and a chain, where beginning is a glance and whose ending is eternity. Yasu. Yasas! Woo! For those that you don't know me, I'm Danielle. I'm Domina's younger sister. Um, Domina and Ben, thank you so much. This has been amazing. <laughs> He's going to clap because he knows my lips going to start twitching. I hate speaking in public, so sorry. Um, I can remember one time when we were little girls, Domina told me that she needed three things in life to be happy. The first... Find a partner who truly loved and appreciated her to share her life with. The second was to marry that person in this Greek Orthodox church, since it's the same church in which our parents were married 36 years ago. And the third thing she needed, to have children. And look at her now after all these years. She has everything she ever dreamed of. God truly answered her prayers. However, she apparently forgot to ask for them in that order. <laughs> Being the younger sister of Domina Holbeck wasn't an easy job. She was a hard act to follow. She was beautiful, 
outgoing and smart. I, obviously, was introverted and awkward. Domina was the head cheerleader. I was a mathlete. Domina had millions of boyfriends. I had instinct posters. <laughs> and even as I got older and started to date real three-dimensional boys, my prom dates would come over and request to have their photos taken with Domina <laughs> and not with me. I can admit now this was slightly annoying, um, but looking back, I really can't blame them. And we have some fantastic pictures of Domina to commemorate all of my high school dances. <laughs> but even though I always felt like I was in Domina's shadow, she never saw it that way. For instance, my first day of high school, Domina had informed all of her friends I was starting. She had someone meet me. She had someone meet me at the end of every period. Sorry. <laughs> It's so embarrassing, but it's true. She had someone meet me at the end of every period to walk me to my next class. She told me she wanted to make sure I was comfortable on my first day of high school. It was something I definitely didn't appreciate at the time. It was one more reminder of how perfect my sister was. But looking back, I just feel so lucky to know that I've always had a sister that's been looking out for me. And it's something that's never changed. As the years have gone by, Dominus truly become my best friend. I'm very fortunate to have such a loving, caring sister that's always there for me, no matter what, and no matter how far apart we are. Domina continues to look out for me to this day. For instance, I receive a daily weather report from Domina every day in the winter. I also receive frequent text messages and calls letting me know if it's okay for me to drive to work that day. She even offers to call my boss on snow days because she's not gonna allow me to drive. She also requests my car maintenance history, informs me when my service is due, this may sound slightly overbearing, but it's just the start. <laughs> in all seriousness, if you're lucky enough to be in Domina's inner circle, you know she will always be there for you. She is the most loving and caring person that I know, and she always goes above and beyond for those that she loves. Because of this, I truly, for a really, really long time, never thought that Domino would find someone. <laughs> or at least find someone that was good enough to marry her. I was proven wrong when I met Ben. I actually knew Ben was the one for Domino the first time we were all in a car together. Domino tends to be slightly neurotic um, in the car. And as we were driving, I looked over at Domina. Her feet were braced against the windshield and she was grabbing Ben's arm so tightly she could have taken his blood pressure. But Ben didn't seem phased or surprisingly even annoyed. He just kept reassuring her that it would be okay and promising he would not get on the freeway. I realized at that moment if he could handle Domina in the car, then he must be the one. Then, you get our family, you even actively participate in the family thread. You're the big brother I've always wanted. I couldn't be happier that Domina gets to spend the rest of her life with you. As maid of honor, I've been told I'm supposed to give you some advice at this time, so here goes. People say all the time not to go to bed angry. That's bullshit. <laughs> Everyone at some point in their relationship has gone to bed angry. It's just life, and you're gonna need sleep if you're gonna have enough energy to get up and win that fight with Dominant in the morning. <laughs> Serious though, it isn't important that you go to sleep angry. What's important that you wake up willing to do it all over again. And one more thing, 
Normally, it's tradition to tell the groom to always agree with the bride. But let's all be honest. Ben, are you ever wrong? (laughs) Dominic and Ben, I really am so, so happy for you. I think it's rare to find a partner that makes you a better person, but you've found that in one another. You are soulmates, and I know that you will have an amazing life together. So please, everyone, raise your glasses in a toast to Ben and Domina. Here's to dreams coming true, regardless of the order. Cheers to Domina. How's everyone doing tonight? It's a great night so far, right? Uh, It's going to get a little bit better once we get past all this, I think, and start using this dance floor. Um, So everyone, I'm Jason Fackler. Uh, I'm the best man for this fantastic wedding. Uh, Let's first start off by saying it's just been an incredible weekend. Uh, We've had a blast. I've been here for a couple days now, hanging out with friends and seeing everyone, meeting everyone that's here tonight. Domina, you look absolutely stunning, right? I'm glad because I I pre-wrote this speech and I said, Domina, you look stunning, so I'm glad you actually do. It worked out well. Um, Ben, you look all right. I've known Ben a long time, but sadly enough, I've only actually hung out with Domina once. Uh, I met her, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Domina, Domino's the kind of person that uh, you only need to meet once to know how special a person she is. Uh, She got my stamp of approval pretty quick when I walked into her apartment for some pre-gaming before going out in LA. And uh, there was a complete spread set up. Uh, Drinks, snacks, food, etc. And she pretty much acted like she had known me for years. We had a really good time that weekend. It was my first time in LA. So I'll never forget that, especially now that you're getting married. So Ben and I met in 2002 through some mutual friends at our alma mater, Miami University in Oxford, Ohio. Uh, If you know Ben, he's definitely told you that he went there. Us Miami Miami University grads like to tell people that we went there. We may even tell you that it's the Ivy League of the Midwest. So just go along with that if we don't. Our bromance really began the summer after, I said bromance, Uh, officially began the summer after the school year that we were supposed to graduate. We were in Columbus, Ohio and had a, did we just become best friends moment? (laughs) At a bar. Honestly, I have a bad memory these days. I can't remember exactly what happened. Uh, But it was some sort of wingman situation uh, where we talked to some girls, yada, yada. You're not supposed to talk about that stuff in this. (laughs) Um, We decided that night that we should be roommates for our fifth year in college. Uh, We liked it a lot there. We wanted to go back some more. Uh, Fast forward uh, through a lot of Tiger Woods golf playing, NCAA football 2002 uh, on Xbox, a pet turtle named Fifth Year. May he rest in peace. Uh, A wall made of cork. It's very weird. And uh, we ended up uh, the following year in Columbus after we finished school. Uh, Ben started off with a room in the dining room. Uh, in Joe and I's two-bedroom apartment um, until we could have we had enough room to get a, a three-bedroom place. So this is the time in our lives where we decided to do pretty much nothing with our lives uh, for a couple years, but we had a really good time. We met the most amazing crew of friends, a lot of which are here tonight. Hey, guys. And we scraped enough money together to pay rent and buy beer for beer pong. We played hundreds, maybe thousands of games of Euchre. Only the Ohio people know what that is. Um, And uh, we watched new episodes of the OC with some very, very strict guidelines. Uh, There were fines up to and including death, especially if a scene included Summer and Seth Cohen. Uh, So at some point around 2007, some of us decided we had had enough of Ohio and it was time to move. Uh, It was almost a mass uh, migration to Arizona, but uh, I ended up in Florida along with Mr. Garrett. And uh, 
Ben drove his 1990-something Chevy Cavalier to Arizona, and somehow it, it made it there, just barely, I believe. Uh, from that point on, Ben decided to hone in on the successful life that we were supposed to live, having graduated from the Ivy League of the Midwest. We couldn't just play euchre and beer pong for the rest of our lives, unfortunately. We kept in great touch over the years, and I was always excited to hear how his life was evolving and progressing. We saw each other at least once a year in Arizona, Florida, Ohio, or wherever our old vet trip ended up that year. He took a lot of positions, uh, or he took some positions with some new companies while he was there. He got an apartment in Manhattan Beach. I mean, come on, his life was pretty incredible. He was getting reservations at Dorsia whenever he wanted, and people were admiring the raised lettering on his business cards. But at, the, <laughs> but at the end of the day, Ben and I are very similar in that we, uh, we aren't fully enjoying something unless we're enjoying it with someone else. All these things ha that happened took him down a path that led to Domina. Well, his path led to Joel and Heather, and then they introduced him to Domina. But still, he met Domina. And the timing was great because I was in LA a couple months later and got to meet her. So Ben Satterfield, who grew up in Carlisle, Ohio, was now dating a Hollywood agent. And I meet her and she's amazing. Fun, beautiful, caring, and a great host. Wow, this is it. He's officially set the bar too high for me to outcool him. So here we are celebrating these two amazing people, one of which I've already established uh, as a lifelong best friend, and the other I'm so excited to get to know more and more. I can't wait to share vacations with the two of you. I can't wait for Michelle and I to use your Santa, I mean, stay with you at your Santa Monica apartment <laughs> and you to come visit us in Miami Beach. And even from the opposite coast of the country, continue to wa uh, watch you carry on an amazing life with your wife and baby girl. And as a fellow small town Ohio guy, I'm so proud to see where you've gone and the family you've created, and I can only hope to create something as amazing myself. So with that, I ask you to please raise your glass and a toast to Ben and Domin. I don't have my glass, so I'm gonna grab it. <laughs> uh, cheers. I wanna cheers you guys. Thank you for the speeches that you all just gave. That was great. We appreciate that. Uh, so a lot of this has been covered, guys. Uh, Rob kind of touched on it a little bit. People have come from far and wide, and we really do appreciate what you guys have done. So Mike came all the way from Amsterdam. He's from the furthest away. And people really have really chipped in to make this day happen for us, because we don't live here in Utah. We're coming from out of state. So Domina's family, Tanya, Rob, everyone, the whole community, thank you. Danielle, obviously. Tanya's sisters with the cookies. You, what else? Just go through the list. There's been a ton of things going on. Well, my mom's friends, I mean, you know who you are. You guys are our family. And I, the ladies and my mom, like my mom and dad have wonderful, beautiful friends. And I am always so overwhelmed when I come home and there's, a shower and I, you guys have just been amazing from uh, everything that you've done for us is, it's a bit overwhelming and so flattering um, and then obviously we have to thank my family like my immediate family is just so amazing and I just have to reiterate how much they mean to me we have the 10 and then we have Evie and you guys we're gonna keep growing and my mom and sister have just gone out of their way to do so, so much for me during this on top of everything everyone else has done. So thank you. Um. Oh, yep. So they also touched on it a little bit with my family. So I don't know if everybody knows. I think most of you do. Uh, Big Ben got on his first airplane ride ever to come to this. And, and you've all heard about Domina a little bit today, and, and it's, uh, let's be honest, she's the one that talked him into coming. <laughs> but thank you guys. Thank you to my family for coming. My aunt's here. So these people are special to me. They're, this, my mom and her sister. 
very special to me. We, we grew up very close to one another. My mom's mother lived a block away from, from us, and she passed years ago, but a very special person in my life. Uh, my dad's mom's still alive, couldn't make it, but seeing my aunt here makes me very happy. So thank you for coming as well. Okay. So I don't know the Domino knows, but I'm going to say a little bit about her. Okay. Uh, well, first let me say something. Okay, she's going to Well, the rest of my family, obviously, that came from far away, thank you. I just have to tell he Heather and Joel, thank you. They introduced us. And I told myself at, at my wedding, I'm going to thank them. Heather took her time when she introduced me to Ben. She kind of like filled him out a little bit. And then she like made sure it was the right timing. She like met him a few times and, and she knew we were going to like each other. And we did. And I, and, I, and I thank you. If it wasn't for you guys, like we wouldn't be together. So, so thank you. Thank you. All right. We didn't, today's my first Greek wedding. So we don't. We didn't get to do vows, so I do want to say a little bit of something about, about my bride today. So as it's been touched on, I'm from a very small, small town in Southern Ohio, which is actually still a village. I'm not sure it's officially a town yet. Uh, so as you can imagine where I'm from, so, so my mother and father have been married, what, 43 years now? So their anniversary was the 20th of this month, uh, and your parents have been married, what, 30? 30, 35 or 36 years? 36 years, so what a great example for us, right? And today, we have a lot, a lot to work towards to get to where they are. Um, but as you can imagine, being from a small town where someone like my mother marries my father at 17 and 19, people start to ask you pretty early on, hey, uh, why aren't you married? <laughs> and this is probably pretty common if you've been single probably been asked this question before, but this question starts around your late teens, early 20s, where I'm from. So as a 36-year-old, I've been hearing this question for a very long time. Why, why aren't you married? Can you not find someone? What's going on out there in Arizona? What's happening, right? So I kind of got sick of this, and I kind of try to think of more and more creative ways I can answer this question. And one of them that I came up with was the breeder. Well, guys, I'm looking for a breeder. So some of you are laughing, you know what a breeder is, but for those of you who don't know, basically a breeder is just, just the perfect combination of things that you can think of. And I would, I would try to be more ridiculous as I gave this answer to, to the next person. So I would say things like, well, you know, she's got to be really smart, right? So at least a graduate, postgraduate degree of some kind, because I'm not going to have children with a dummy. <laughs> got to be smart. Uh, I love sports. I don't know if you guys know, but I love sports. So she's going to have to be athletic or at least have one brother or someone in the immediate family who's at least a D1 athlete of some kind. Thanks, Dallas. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, I got more analytical about it. I'm like, well, I'm 6'3", but most of my family's not over six feet tall. So by the time we have children, 20 years down the road, average height's probably going to be at least 6'5". So she's going to need to be 5'10", 5'11", at least. I would say these things. And these are just, just the beginning. I would, I would get deeper. So you guys all think that I'm joking, but if you look around, there's some people nodding in the back. They've heard this before. Look at that table. This is, <laughs> this is true. But I wouldn't stop there, so. <laughs> she would have to be tall, she would have to be athletic, she would have to be smart. And you guys are obviously listening to me right now, so she would have to be patient, right? <laughs> patient would be very important in this entire scenario. And I would do this, I would come up with these things, and then of course, after I could think of the most ridiculous things that were out, I'd be like, what? and obviously beautiful, right? Like, I, I mean, that just went without saying, but let me throw it in as well, because she's gotta be beautiful. Um, and then, oddly enough, I met this woman who actually checks all of those boxes. But not just that, guys. Come on, come on. She checks far more boxes than that. So Domina, <clears throat> who is all of those things which are jokes and funny and very nice to have, let's be honest, uh, she is by far one of the most empathetic people that I've ever met in my life. And to the point that it makes me feel like a little bit of a terrible person <laughs> because 
She cares so much about what's happening to other people. I think just two days ago we were at Starbucks and there was somebody who was, had some physical abnormalities and she was literally crying in the car because she just, she, she started to imagine what his day might be like and it's not like ours. And, and I just, I don't, that level of things does not exist in my mind and it makes me appreciate her even more. She's one of the most loving people that I've ever met in my life, which for all of you that know her and her family, obviously you know where she gets that, right? They're, they're very loving, they're very inclusive, they're just great, great people. Um, and I saw all of these things right away. So it, it, it's kind of become a bit of a joke that Ben, like, you weren't joking when you were saying all of those really obnoxious things because look at Domino, you were really looking for that, but I really just lucked out. Because I met this person with all of these great attributes who has far more than I could even think of when I was listing the most obnoxious list of things that you would look for in a wife. So, very happy to be with this lady and call her my bride today. And I'll say this as well to Rob and Tanya. When you talked about bringing Domina home today in your speech, I also brought a little girl home about eight months ago. And I'm only learning what it means to be a father to a little girl and do these things, but I can't even imagine being 30 years down the road and doing what you guys are doing right now. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And that's all I have to say today. Now I, yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sound dumb compared to that. Thank you. Um, obviously, I, I love Ben. Um, and I know we don't like get to say vows, so I'm sorry, but we have to just pronounce our love, I guess. Um, when I first met Ben, it took me like a few times and like, I, I, we like kind of knew we were gonna get married like pretty soon. We, we went to a wedding in Arizona with Nan and Jenny's wedding, yeah, and uh, they're here. And we like went, we went somewhere and had dinner and we kind of, we looked at each other and we're like, this is like it. And we kind of didn't want to like freak ourselves out because it was four months into it, but we, we knew that we found our person. Um, but I just have to say that Ben is like a man in like every sense of the word. Um, he's there for me through everything. And, and I know how my sister said we, we did do things a teeny bit out of the traditional order. He didn't flinch once. When I called and told Ben I was pregnant, he laughed. Like, he, he was so happy. I was so scared. And he, he, all he wanted to do was just celebrate and hug me. And it, there wasn't one bit of concern. I mean, he was like, why would you, like, we, we wanted to get married and have kids. Like, why would you even, like, be even concerned for one second? And I just knew that I was supposed to be with Ben more in that moment. I mean, it didn't take me getting pregnant to know that, but like, I just knew that he was gonna be just my husband. Like, he's my partner and he stands by me. He, he makes me accountable for myself. He, he makes me just a better person all the time. We kind of all joke that Ben's a know-it-all, <laughs> which can get a teeny bit annoying, but he actually knows a lot. <laughs> And so I think when Heather introduced me to him, she's like, it might be annoying, but I'm like, he actually did his research. So I actually kind of just listen to him now and I know what he's talking about. Like I listen to him and I know that what he's saying is true. And so thank you for standing by my side and making me a better person. And I am going to be the best wife I can to you and the best mother to our kids. And I want us to continue to grow a family and love each other and be there for one another. And I hope that we can just all celebrate in our love tonight and hopefully it's cooler in here and we can have lots of drinks and there's obviously tons of desserts because my mom has amazing friends and there's cake and let's dance and let's party. Thank you. Cheers. Domino and Ben, um, love you guys. Best wishes to you and your beautiful little family. Um, can't wait to see you again soon. Uh, we're gonna come out and visit, I think in August, but uh, thank you so much for having us here at your wedding. 
and uh, we'll always remember this for the rest of our lives. Love you guys. Love you guys. Ben and Domino, we love you guys. So happy to be part of your special day. You guys? We love you. Keep having babies. <laughs> Cheers. This was gonna happen when I first went to dinner with you guys. I was like, this is so on, are you kidding me? Everybody knew, Chanel too, we got home and she's like, those two are meant for each other. I was 100% sure. We wish you guys the best. May you have a long and happy life. We love you, God bless. here <laughs> <laughs> we're at the big Thank wedding you, congratulations guys congratulations. we love you guys it's great to be part of the family Dominic. Dan. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. is yeah we'll we're gonna be, be part of the family we are and uh lots of family reunions to be yep love you yeah. hope to see you family we're, we're excited to yeah be part of have it. a good life <laughs> take care of the baby yeah Anyway, Domina, we had a good time. We had a good time at the Playboy Mansion. I want you to always remember that. Hello Domina, we were so honored to have us here in your wedding and of course from your father and mother we were such a close friends and it was a real blessing so we wish you the best in your life together with the beautiful baby and uh, just continue to trust in God and your life would be happy forever. Okay, Domina and Ben, we are just thrilled for you, watching you get up there and talk, and uh, just seeing your love for one another, and the fact that you already have a child, it's just, and when Ben said, you know, I can see years from now what it's going to be like, that's really life, and we love you, and always remember that, that that really is life, what's going to happen in the future for you and your family. We love you guys. 
and so glad for the association of Angie and you and uh, and being I feel better having Angie there with you so take care and we love you guys Domina, it was sure wonderful having you at our house for your shower. It was a special treat to see you and all of your friends and family. Uh, it was even more special to meet you and Ben here and to see you. Elizabeth sends her love and her sorrow that she couldn't be here. Um, but she's having a good time with her nursing reunion, of course. Um, but you guys have a lot of shining examples in your life. You have a, the start of a beautiful family. You have started uh, a relationship in front of everybody that is to be admired. We wish you love, we wish you peace, we, we wish you joy, we wish you many more children. And uh, you make Tanya and Rob very grateful multiple grandparents. Thanks. Three. Phenomena, it's Jay Black, Low, and Doc Rob, your favorite three people. Just want to say we love you guys. Thanks so much for being such great friends. Um, we're all so blessed to be here on this special day with you guys and can't wait to see uh, what life has in store for the three of you and your awesome little family. Yes, we love you. We're always here for you no matter what. I was there from day one, buddy. I knew she was the one. Don't you forget. Said she was the one. You said you were going to marry her and you did. Nice work. Thanks, man. We love you.